Go ahead and get started, Dawn. Let's see how many we have joining us already. We're at about 40 attendees signed in. Okay. So if you want to go ahead and get started, yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Well, hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Tiffany Wiegers, 2021 CCIM St. Louis Chapter President. We have a great program today, but first I want to thank our sponsors. Their sponsorship is critical in our mission in bringing programs, education, scholarships to the CC and scholarships to the CCIM chapter. I also want to thank our program hosts and CCIM St. Louis board members, Ben Cherry, Tony Kennedy, Andrea Kendrick, and Tom Ray. Uh, so we're starting to take another look at in-person programs and we would appreciate your feedback. So if you could please take a moment to answer the short question, which hopefully is up on your screen to help us uh, decide when exactly we will start. There it is. So if you could just take a look at that and answer the question, we'd really appreciate it. Also, uh, please save the date for Wednesday, July 28th at 11 a.m. There's going to be a collaborative webinar for CCIM Institute's entire Region 7, which includes most of the Midwest. Uh, this is free to, for all who register and will feature Casey Conway, CCIM Institute's Chief Economist. And uh, Casey will be uh, talking about the resurgence of secondary markets and I'm sure most of you know, anything Casey talks about or presents on is very interesting and you don't wanna miss this. Also Tuesday, August 10th at 11.30 a.m., we will have uh, the St. Louis City Soccer Club Development and Surrounding Area Program. Location is to be determined, uh, but hopefully we do have in-person it will be an in-person program and uh, which will be at the St. Louis Club in Clayton. And you can find more information on the CCIM St. Louis website. So now I will hand it off to today's program host, Ben Cherry of Manor Real Estate to introduce today's panelists. Ben? Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Tiffany. I appreciate it. Hi, everyone. Welcome for joining for today's CCIM virtual event. Um, as Tiffany mentioned, I'm Ben Cherry, and I'm one of the event chairs along with Tony Kennedy, Tom Ray, and Andrea Kendrick. Uh, we very much appreciate you being here um, via Zoom, and hopefully we'll look forward to seeing you in person very soon, and hopefully you voted as such on the poll. Um, so, for today's topic. It's one that I certainly am very excited about, as I'm sure you are as well. Um, so today's topic is focused around the NGA headquarters development and the impact on the surrounding area. As you have questions throughout each of the presentations, I'd encourage you to please place your questions um, into the Q&A tab that you'll see at the bottom of your screen. Um, in lieu of doing it in the uh, chat function. Uh, we'll be monitoring both, but um, please, we would encourage you to place your questions in the, uh, the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. So we've got an all-star lineup uh, for today's panelists. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into each of their bios so that you can learn more about each of their backgrounds. Um, starting on us off first will be Sue Pullman. Uh, Sue is serving uh, the NGA in the dual functions of NGA West Executive and Program Director, next NGA West as well. As the uh, WX, she is the NGA's Director uh, Point Person on the ground at the facilities in the St. Louis metro area, 
ensuring synchronization across all West Mission areas, providing presentation uh, for the interests of the workforce and interacting on behalf of the agency with the local community. As the program director for N2W, uh, Mrs. Pullman oversees the planning, design, and construction of a new campus in St. Louis to replace the NGA Second Street facility. Um, she became NGA's N2W program director on May 3rd, 2015, and uh, WX on April 26th, 2020. Um, NGA, just to provide some context, delivers world-class geospatial intelligence that provides a decisive advantage to policymakers, military service members, intelligence professionals, and first responders. So after Sue's presentation will be John Berglund. John is the managing partner of the Starwood Group and the founding member of the Downtown Innovation District. Uh, John is a St. Louisan who has a background in software, architecture, and other entrepreneurial endeavors. And the mission of Downtown North is to attract, create, and grow technology advanced companies to revitalize the district's buildings and public spaces, and to ensure a diverse and equitable platform of success in the district. Um, the district itself is anchored by T-Rex, the convention center, the Globe and 900 North Tucker, which is the old uh, post-dispatch building, as many of you know. Um, the Starwood Group, which John is the managing partner of, is focused on acquisition of quality, privately held businesses and real estate. And as I'm sure you probably have also heard, Square is planning on occupying the 900 North Tucker building um, later this year. Um, last and certainly not least, um, Paul McKee uh, will be wrapping us up. Um, Paul is the founder of M Property Services LLC, which is a real estate development firm, which was created in 1990 by Paul uh, to develop re real estate in a unique method of value creation through high quality sites, buildings, and amenities. Um, Paul has a long history of entrepreneurialism, creating Parrot Corporation in 1979, uh, which as you know, is a construction design build company and Environmental Management Corporation in 1980. In 2002, uh, Paul sold EMC to British Oxygen Company, and he also sold Parrot to his son, Joe. Um, under Paul's guidance, MPS has provided development assistance for more than 3,500 acres of sites and over 250 facilities since 1990. Throughout his career, uh, Mr. McKee has completed projects with more than $2 billion in market value. Now, uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Sue to start us off and provide some background on the NGA project and how things are progressing thus far. Awesome. So good to be here with all of you today. Um, I love getting out and talking about the project and talking about NGA. Um, and we'll look forward to more in-person events for sure. I'm, I will confess I'm a little tired of Zoom um, much prefer being with all of you and hopefully with a good lunch. I always enjoy the lunch meetings. Um, so as Ben mentioned, NGA, we have a really interesting mission. Um, the N2W project, I think, brought our mission to the attention of St. Louisans, uh, where maybe it hadn't been on anyone's radar screen before. So we're both a defense agency and an intelligence agency. We have two lines of bosses up to the President of the United States, one line through the Department of Defense and the Secretary of Defense, and the other through the DNI or Director of National Intelligence. And we are simply put responsible for uh, knowing and understanding what is going on on the face of the earth at any given time, uh, and even to a degree under the, the uh, face of the earth. Um, so that's an important role. It involves uh, certainly a lot of classified uh, mission sets, but also to an increasing degree, um, a lot of unclassified collaboration with um, folks we refer to as non-traditional partners. So as we go through this, you'll see a little bit and hear a little bit about why um, the selection of the site on the north side was, uh, was made and how uh, we believe this, this facility is going to really enhance our mission going forward. So uh, on to the slide deck, um, and you can go directly to the second slide. Okay, so that handsome gentleman is Vice Admiral Robert Sharp. 
uh, Admiral Sharp is our director of NGA. And uh, he loves coming to St. Louis and he loves interacting with the St. Louis community. And he's always very clear about the fact that we're building more than a building. Um, you know, this is not just about putting up four walls and a nice office space. Um, it is a different way of doing business. I, I kind of liken it to a system um, more than a facility. And the beauty of it is the fact that, that because we are building new, we can what we call purpose build. So, so we can really uh, make this facility into what it needs to be to take our, um, our mission forward well into the future. So if you go to the next slide, um, I'll talk a little bit about um, how the director's intent or what we would call the NGA strategy meshes with N2W and what we're trying to achieve uh, with the new facility. So we, we kind of refer to our mission imperatives as, as the moonshot. And if you ever hear Admiral Sharp talk, he, he really focuses on the NGA moonshot. Those things we absolutely have to do to protect this nation uh, within NGA's mission set. Um, those things feed out of um, things you've probably heard of, the national defense strategy, for instance, the national intelligence strategy. All of that comes to us at NGA, and then we have to figure out, all right, what do we need to do to react? What do we need to do to secure the nation? So in terms of N2W, back in 2016, when we really put pen to paper in terms of the obje objectives we were trying to achieve, um, which, which did certainly feed into the site selection, we said, hey, we know we have to have a facility where we can partner with the folks we normally haven't in the past partnered with. So we've always been a very secretive organization. We now have to work in the open. So we need space where we can uh, securely work in the open. So it might seem a little odd to say, well, you're going to have unclassified collaboration. Why is that so special? Well, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to manage when you're building a, a facility that has to be secure, but yet as a part of that facility, you're going to have um, be inviting in these non-traditional partners and having these unclassified conversations, doing things like using wireless technology to enhance your flexibility. Um, all of that becomes very difficult when your facility also has to be secure. So that's where being purpose built really comes into play. Um, we, we, we knew we had to offer a flexible mission space. So uh, not only do we need to have areas that are unclassified and areas that are classified, but we also needed to build so that in the future, if we need to change spaces back and forth, we need to be able to more easily do that. And believe it or not, it's really hard um, normally to change classified space to unclassified space when you haven't built that in from the get-go. Um, so we have we purpose-built our design to be able to do that. Um, the third bullet there, the technology, incredibly important. One of the big issues we have here at Second Street, our current facility, we're just in an old military warehouse. Um, it's really reached the end of its useful life for a lot of reasons, but one of the biggest is we really can't continue to up, update the technology in this building. And as you can imagine, technology is our bread and butter. So uh, N2W will offer the technology we need to take us into the future. And then the, the fourth bullet there, sustainability is important. Um, the building we sit in today at Second Street was uh, built in 1918. So we like to say we're building for the next 100 years. The Department of Defense has been in this building in one way, shape, or form or another for over 100 years now. And we want to be good stewards and we want to build, um, build a lasting facility for NGA, which then goes back to that flexibility piece of, of building in the flexibility so that the facility can change as time goes on. I'll add another bullet here that we actually do have on our very specific objectives. And that is to be a good neighbor. When we selected the site uh, in the St. Louis Place neighborhood, um, we knew, you know, we were going into an area where where it's it's a combination of residential and commercial. 
So we want to be a good neighbor and that's involved everything from including the neighborhood as we were going through our initial design plan to now trying to keep, uh, keep open lines of communication with the, those neighborhood groups. So that's really important to us. Um, as we, we say N2W is going to become a geospatial gateway to the world. And, and I have to say, St. Louis is poised to become similarly uh, a geospatial gateway and center of excellence for the world and, and really moving fast in that direction. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Next slide. So this is actually an internal, uh, an internal slide that talks about our geospatial ecosystem steering committee. Um, this is a group we have again internally to NGA, but this is our way of staying in touch with this burgeoning geospatial ecosystem that's going on in St. Louis now. Um, so we stood this up so that we could maintain touch points so that we could ensure that uh, within the agency, we're not duplicating efforts that we're uh, keeping everybody kind of in their lanes, um, but still making sure everyone is informed about these wonderful things going on locally. So that from a mission standpoint, we can take advantage of these activities of the new industry elements that are moving in of the new academic uh, broadening that's going on at the various universities. Uh, we just, we want to stay in touch with that and we want to connect where it is appropriate for us to connect. Um, to that end, uh, this internal organization has led us through some things like an MOU with T-Rex, some uh, R&D agreements with local universities that have either been put in place or are in the process of being put in place. We have an educational partnership agreement with Harris Stowe um, that we think will play great, put great dividends out for us in terms of our future workforce and development of that workforce. Uh, we also stay in touch with things like the SLOG, which is our, our industry forum, the U.S. Geospatial Intelligence Foundation. They have a St. Louis area working group, so we stay in touch with them. Uh, locally, there is the GeoFutures Initiative. Um, there's the Geo Resolution Conference put on by St. Louis University. Um, and then further within the PM, we maintain uh, a close working relationship with St. Louis Development Corporation as the entity that is, is looking out to make sure that the city follows through on its uh, promises that it made to NGA as a part of the site selection process. So those are just some of the activities um, that, that we see going on in St. Louis that, that we try to stay in touch with. And next, if you go to the next slide, um, you'll see a map. So this, this map, first of all, um, gives you maybe a good picture of why we selected the site in North St. Louis. Of, of the four sites we were considering at the time, we, you know, we did our down select and got into the nitty gritty you know, what this site brought us was proximity. Proximity to a high degree of, I think, energy going on in the city in terms of the educational institutions, but as well with the Cortex and the T-Rex um, and the potential there for partnerships. Um, those kinds of partnerships that we knew we could take advantage of in the long term to enhance our mission. Um, so there you see the, in the green next NGA West, you know, just to the north. Um, one of the things I, I need to mention here is um, at T-Rex, uh, just next month in July, late July, we will have an official launch uh, for our Moonshot Lab. So Moonshot Lab is going to be a, a great bridge um, to take NGA from now until we can move into N2W to be able to do a lot of that innovation and collaboration in an unclassified environment with a lot of non-traditional partners, things that we really can't accommodate here at Second Street or even at our Arnold facility. Again, because these buildings are built completely secure for a classified mission, um, it's really difficult to bring people in. 
So our moonshot lab at T-Rex is gonna be great in terms of connecting with all of these folks who are coming in uh, to St. Louis, the accelerator efforts, the new starts, uh, along with the universities um, who in many cases will have a presence at T-Rex um, to work with us also. So next slide. So this is just a great artist rendering. This is actually my favorite one um, because it shows the downtown panorama in the background, but you can see here what our facility will look, at, look like. We have two structured parking garages on the east and west side of, of the site. There in the center is our main operations building. You can see, I think you can see there, it'll have two wings. Um, and overall McCarthy hit, I think, did a really great job of, of designing, uh, not just the building, but really the entire campus. Um, so we've moved forward now, we're, we're actually out of the design phase and fully into construction, but this is, this is a pretty good rendering of what things will look like uh, when we move in in 2025. Next slide. So this is coming from the south facing north, um, looking at the front entrance to our building uh, as you would walk from our visitor control center uh, towards the lobby. Um, again, I think just a really uh, fine looking facade. Um, you might be able to make out there, we, we have a, a, a nice exterior balcony on the third level, uh, which I think will be a really nice um, amenity for our employees and, and honestly for visitors. We do entertain quite a few VIP visitors over the course of a year. Um, so it'll be nice for, for that kind of thing too. Next slide. And we have an interior courtyard uh, surrounded by uh, the two wings of the, the building in the front. So uh, again, a nice amenity. This will be right off of the cafeteria for the workforce uh, to be able to take, take advantage of that, get a little sunshine on a nice day and enjoy, enjoy the out, outdoors. Next slide. Um, and this is a shot of our lobby. Um, I'll call attention um, to the brick wall on the right. So we have a design feature in the lobby that will be made from the bricks from the Buster Brown building. So one of the um, agreements we had with the state and national historic preservation folks was to somehow use bricks from the Buster Brown building, which had been on the national register use it, uh, use those bricks in our facility. So we're going to have a nice feature wall in the lobby using those bricks. I think, I think it's a nice touch. And again, we, we really tried to incorporate brick uh, both in our exterior facade and here in the interior. Again, just our way of maybe paying homage to the neighborhood we're moving into St. Louis as a whole with all of our, our red brick structures. Next slide. Um, and this is just the layout of our site. Um, I put this in here because I do get a lot of questions. Wow, why, why almost 100 acres? We have 97 acres. Why in the world would you need that much space? Um, and really a lot of that is based on security. Uh, we are an intelligence agency. Security is absolutely paramount. So you'll see our operations building right in the center and that's, and that's on purpose. Um, because all of that acreage is helping give us uh, somewhat of a, of a secure perimeter. Um, I'll also mention here that um, to the right on this slide, uh, and that's to the north around that big detention pond that's, that's shown there on the site, about 25 acres or about a quarter of the acreage will be dedicated to um, natural landscape to local and native uh, plants and grasses. So I'm really excited about that. I think, A, that's going to be really nice for our work, workforce. There's going to be a, a good walking path that goes throughout the site. Um, so it'll be really neat to have kind of those native plant features on that side of the site. Whereas on the south side, on the left of this slide, um, that will be a more formal landscape um, that's kind of our front door. And so we will maintain that in, in turf and trees and, and bushes and flowers and, and the things you would, you would probably normally 
see. Uh, I happen to live out very close to the Danforth Plant Science Center and I've admired their uh, native kind of prairie landscape. And so I'm looking forward to seeing how that turns out here for N2W. Also, I'll mention again, our partnership with the city, very important. Uh, certainly they're also helping us in terms of some of the security uh, around the area and also the infrastructure improvements that um, you know, they brought into the deal, I'll call it the deal, when we, when we purchased the, and acquired the site. Um, so things like street improvements along Jefferson and Parnell, uh, now they're, they've put some plans in place for Cass Avenue and um, some improvements along 22nd Street. We're also looking forward to the Brickline uh, bike path that will shoot over our way from Grand Avenue. That's gonna be a really nice amenity. We have a lot of bike riders in our workforce who uh, are excited about being able to bike to the site. They bike here to Second Street today. So, so looking forward to that. Okay, next slide. Uh, construction projects, progress, just a few pictures. I encourage everyone to just drive around the site. Things are, things are really happening over there. Uh, foundations are just about done. Uh, steel is going up on the main operations building and a uh, lot of good progress on both of the parking garages with the Western one being uh, further ahead. Next slide. And then, you know, this is our business is imagery. So as, as I said to Paul yesterday when we were practicing, yeah, we know people. Um, so so we, ha we get these nice shots monthly uh, from a commercial imagery provider to be able to track uh, the progress on the site from above, uh, which is really helpful. We're also actually using uh, internal uh, methods too. We have, uh, we have a group of surveyors here who do 3D um, camera visualization. So they're doing some 3D shots, um, again, fairly regularly. And in the end, we'll have a really good, uh, I think, history of the process for building this, this big facility um, and, and taking advantage of a lot of modern design and construction that also gives us 3D visualization of, of our facility, which will be, um, I think, really helpful in the long term, uh, certainly from a maintenance standpoint, to have those tools available to us. OK, next slide. We have a lot of partners, as you can imagine, on a $1.7 billion project. It takes, takes a lot of folks. Um, I'll just mention McCarthy Hit is, is our prime contractor joint venture for the construction, design and construction. Uh, obviously, the Corps of Engineers is our construction agent, so they're making sure all of that work gets done. Uh, but we have a lot of other partners. We have partners in the Navy do, helping us with our IT design. Um, I've mentioned the city of St. Louis, but the state of Missouri is also making sure, um, you know, everything's done that we need done at the state level. And we will have, we don't have today, but we will have a series of contractors and companies who are our technology partners as we get those contracts awarded. Um, probably, you know, as important as the building is the technology that will go in it. Okay, next slide. And then finally, just our schedule. Uh, we are currently on schedule and trying to certainly keep it that way. Uh, construction, steel, et cetera, foundations going in through 22. In 23, we'll do the interior fit out of the building. Finally, in 24, uh, we have really close to a year of IT system installation and a lot of testing that has to happen also a process we call security accreditation uh, to make sure the building is as secure as we intend it to be. And then finally in 2025, we will move in and we will be in, um, it'll take six months or less for us to move everything from Second Street over to the new facility. And I think that's it. Next slide, I think is the end. So there you go, N2W in a nutshell. Great, thank you so much, Sue. Um, wonderful presentation. Um, next up is John Berglund.
John, feel free to take it away. Hi, thanks, Ben. Um, I think the first thing you do might be to show the video, and I don't think we really need the sound up on that. Um, but we, if you want to go ahead and Dawn and launch that, and I can kind of just talk over uh, the video that we had done. Um, everybody asks me always uh, when Square is going to move in. Uh, that should be happening over the summer. We've got occupancy in the building, and it, it really is Square figuring out um, uh, what a return to work looks like with, with COVID. Uh, but we're very excited. We're going to have um, 1,200 people coming in and out of that building. And um, so um, if you can, Don, if you can spin up that video, that'd be great. Unless we don't have it, in which case well, that's I'm okay. I'm working on it here. I'm, I'm oh. good. Give me a moment. <laughs> okay. Either that or we can jump into the slideshow too. Uh, let me get back to my thing here. So um, as that's coming up, um, there we go. Okay. So this is, um, we, we moved the post dispatch from where their traditional building was to one to the east by a block. And east block. Um, we, the building had been vacant for a number of years and uh, was available. This gives a good shot of the overall of what we're trying to do with our district and how things fit in. Uh, we're just uh, west of the convention center and we've got some future developments going on with hopefully parking and then expansion of the convention center. Uh, Square will not have a sign that big on the building, but that was good to see that, nor will the globe. But you can kind of see the context there of Square moving in and some of it under construction, which was taken a few months ago. Some green spaces we go over the Board of Education and which has a really great green space. And then also uh, what we hope the district will do both to Wash Ave and the area around it. And um, we've got some other partners in there. US Bank is there, as I said, Washington Avenue. We think what we're gonna do is going to um, really help activate what's going on um, Obviously, uh, Wash Ave and downtown's been hit hard by COVID as a lot of the downtown areas have. Um, and so this specific video uh, we put together to really showcase this building and the potential, uh, the post is in the top two floors and we've got the first floor available. Um, and so a little bit of a plug here, uh, we do have space available and you guys are all realtors, so there you go. Um, so I think we're about done. There's a couple more that shows could show what furniture looks like in there. It's amazing what we can do with these um, with the renderings now. Um, so I think um, yeah, that's what the space looks like now, and um, ready to go. So um, I think that if you want to, I think that's probably enough of the video. I don't think there's a whole lot more. If you want to go ahead and stop that and then put up the uh, the slideshow, it'd be great. Thank you. Uh, so the, the building was built in around uh, 1931. It's one of these really great, it was built as a newspaper building. This is what it looks like under construction. Um, and uh, it was really on a rail line that ran up and down Tucker. And so I think the key to a lot of this is just kind of beginning, is, is rebirth as being a good, a good general theme and kind of echoing what Sue had just talked about. This is more than just a building. Um, we're really uh, concerned about the neighborhood and there's an opportunity and, and really hats off. This, this I don't think this would be, have been possible without what Paul is doing and the NGA being North. That, that, that has really been a huge ability to, um, you know, to even allow something like this to go on. So uh, next slide, please. So I, I've got about six, seven slides. I'm going to go pretty quickly. The, the, this downtown innovation district was really um, something that um, started really because of parking. It was a very pragmatic problem that we had and we still have. And um, with the expansion of the convention center uh, and parking uh, being um, removed and with Square coming into the area with 1,200 new jobs and the mass transit system not being as robust as in some other areas, um, we've had to really work through that. And so as we met with city officials, it was like, well, we can't really build a district around parking. Uh, let's see if we can do something a little more interesting. And we really had the opportunity with T-Rex already being in place with what Steve Stone is doing on the Globe Building with Square coming in and then the Convention Center expansion that it was really possible to say, uh, we've got this four piece band, let's figure out uh, how we activate this area north of downtown. Uh, next slide, please. 
And so if you look at it as you come off the bridge and you, uh, the, the new bridge in down Tucker, we, we really are the start of um, a, lo a lot of people who come in from the north as well as a, a connection then to the NGA, which is just a mile and a half away. Next slide, please. And so the, the biggest change probably to the building just from the outside besides it's an historic renovation. So we got all new systems, windows and all that was really the, the northern edge was this brick box, which was a series of additions and we reskinned it. A lot of people have asked us if we actually built a new addition, but it was one of those things that was kind of invisible. And as we, we had the historic uh, Pulitzer lobby and as we worked through the project, we wanted to then reactivate that northern edge and give Square their own entrance. Uh, one just piece about this is we were in a meeting and uh, uh, Jim McKelvey was talking about how the city of St. Louis had really turned its back on North St. Louis. And so the one spot where we have, I would say, um, um, is, is there's a, there's a three-story large window and opening that faces north that's an architectural gesture to the north side. And there's nothing else like it in the building. And that was very intentional, both as a gesture, but also how people will be coming into the building. And so we will have over a thousand uh, people coming and going. Uh, we think mid to late summer, there are a few people have been trickling in, but um, as they said, they're working through the co return to work in COVID as everyone else is. And um, and so the, the biggest thing was that we didn't want to just have it be, um, this one thing that we did, but really the beginning of something. Next slide, please. And so at the end of it, where we've landed in terms of, of we met every two to three weeks, uh, again, uh, T-Rex really being the creative part, Steve Stone and I being, you know, uh, people who and at the end of the day were real estate guys, but we also believe in the bigger neighborhood as well as then the convention center. And so the goal is both intelligence and technology and attracting uh, those jobs and those companies to St. Louis and uh, to revitalize the area and, and to have uh, the diversity and inclusion piece as being integral. We are in the fifth ward, we are on the north side. We do are not interested in gentrification, but integrating with what's there. So we really wanna create jobs and recruit talent. Uh, that's one of the main things you, you hear about is that the, is the talent issue whether it's data science or whatever that is. And, um, and, and so really this idea here is a 20 year idea as Paul, as you'll attest to, or, or even Sue, these, these projects just have an unbelievable amount of starting with an idea. We, we bought the uh, post um, three years in September and we're the new guys, you know, um, three years in. So the, these things do take a long time, but we believe that, um, it's, it's the type of investment that the city's been sorely lacking. And um, we, are, we are optimistic um, that, you know, COVID was definitely a gut punch, but at the same time, um, I, I do believe it's the, it's the bottom and that things are gonna get improved from here. Next slide, please. And so this shows a little bit more of the overview with uh, the convention center and the planned expansion around the Holiday Inn. Uh, you've got T-Rex in the corner there, uh, square opposite the Globe Building, and then uh, the post. Uh, there is, um, getting back to sort of that parking problem that we have, there is a garage that we, um, that is in the works that'll be uh, kind of catty corner to T-Rex. And is again, one of those pragmatic things that you got to have and we got to solve that problem. But the idea that we've got just um, really echoing what Sue talked about, which is this is much more than a building. And, um, and, and really uh, attracting both geospatial and then with Square going in there, uh, FinTech, I believe will be a very important thing. Uh, we've got Stiefel downtown, Square's now there, you've got the Federal Reserve. And we think that long-term beyond just this geospatial end of it, uh, this will be an important opportunity for growth. Next slide, please. So, um, we, we did some analysis of the neighborhoods. This is really just uh, us kind of saying that we did our homework as far as everything from density, existing housing, um, you know, the neighborhoods that are that surround it. Next slide. Um, it's just a lot of data, the bus routes. And, and this is really more, um, we, I, don't, I wouldn't say we have a master plan yet. It's more just um, 
we've done some analysis of the area and, and what, the, what the pieces are. Um, and I got one more slide here. Um, and this, I, I love, again, these old pictures of, um, this is back behind the building on what, what was Hadley Street and um, kind of the area that was torn up that it was a, a rail yard. I think actually the Globe Building was a passenger terminal at one time, the Midwest Terminal Railway, and you could take a train from there. And uh, it, 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 they've all been filled in, but it's kind of a neat history and you can see the post there in the background. So at, at the end of the day, what we are determining in the district is our reason to be. And I think we've actually got that pretty well nailed down, working on uh, the messaging and what it means to be in the district. We still haven't determined, a lot of people are like, what are you? Uh, you know, are you a SBD, are you a 353, SID, TIF, whatever? And, and we're really, we're just a group of people that are meeting and talking. And I would say the analogy would be a lot like what Joe Edwards started with in the loop. Uh, the loop has actually got a special business district piece as well as, um, uh, there's two different ones. That's one that's east of east of Skinker. It's one thing, and west it's another. And um, maybe one's an SPD, one's a SID, I think. And so Joe didn't run into that quickly, and I don't think we need to start taxing ourselves all too quickly. Uh, but we're working on that. But it is this interesting mix of public and private and coming together. Uh, still working on that master plan piece and and how we get the messaging out. And so ultimately, um, as I said, the this is a 20 year play. Uh, we're very excited about what's going on in particular with the NGA, with what Paul's doing that um, in terms of that development, we just absolutely could not be up there uh, doing what we're doing without what Paul's doing. And um, we, um, th these things, they just take a while and uh, we're, we're in it for the long game and feel really good about uh, being able to um, really work with the North side on, on moving forward. So that's all I got. John, that was terrific. Thanks so much, very interesting. Um, and next up we have Mr. Paul McKee. Very good, thanks Ben. And uh, it's, it's great to, to be on here with you all. And if you'll throw the first slide up there, I think it's, it's interesting that, uh, uh, that Sue began uh, where she did because uh, right now, with uh, the NGA uh, project going on and the stadium project, there's over 2.1 plus billion dollars of construction going on on the north side uh, and quite a few construction jobs and the, the trades are doing well. But uh, I gotta say what a great partner the NGA has been uh, organizationally from uh, former director Cardillo and selecting us and now Vice Admiral Sharp and Sue personally have been since day one. Uh, even in the four years where we were competing for it, uh, they've been nothing but uh, committed to this mission. And um, our team has been pleased to convene many meetings uh, with Sue and former director Cardillo and, and now Vice Admiral Sharp dating back to 2015, where we constantly are bringing them up to speed with what we our plans on and where we're headed. Uh, the other thing in this master uh, plan, uh, we started 19 years ago. Uh, John made reference to that. So this has been a journey. And um, for those of you in the real estate business that are on this call, the, the north side is regenerating uh, with what the NGA and Sue are doing, what John's doing, uh, what we're doing, what many others. So our original commitment was at least 25% of the project be completed by others. And I, I hope you're seeing it succeeding that greatly. So next slide, please. This is really to uh, show you how significant and where the uh, NGA fits in the site, the new MLS stadium. And uh, we'd like to rename Jefferson and Cass the district. And you're gonna see more about that in a minute here. Go ahead, please. Next slide. I wanted to show this uh, Greenleaf Market and uh, the Zoom store, which is the next slide right across the street. Why is this significant? We, we get criticized a lot. All we've done is a gas station. Well, there's 67 jobs here in the community, you all, uh, which has been a very strong commitment of ours since the beginning that 
one out of every four jobs we create would come from someone that lives within the community. Well, we've demonstrated that, and now we have contracted the operation of the Greenleaf Market to a family that's from the community and is operating it as their own business, which is significant. This is two blocks away from John's <laughs> building. Uh, when Square moves in, uh, hopefully soon, uh, we'll be able to have our lunch bar open again with warm food served at lunchtime. So the job creation piece of this is huge. Next slide. And now we're gonna talk about the infamous Pruitt-Igo site, uh, the innovation district. And certainly if you look at the upper left-hand corner and you see you know, the NGA and that public entrance there, we lined up as the new, the old 23rd street comes right into the Pruitt-Igo site. This is 34 acres. We've split it into two portions, the innovation district, the north side we're calling Geoent Billy, which will be over 890,000 square feet of office and, and, and uh, hotel space and parking garages. In the south half is called HealthWorks Village, over 835,000 square foot of space and over 5,500 parking spaces. On the north side, when Sue talked about having tech partners and VIP visitors and creating this ecosystem around geospatial, that's what we're all about. So that we call it the A block that's lit up there will be the first phase uh, in the A1 building is an Excel innovation accelerator building for startups. And by the way, we'll be moving into, into that building. That building is about 30% pre-leased already. A2 is a parking garage. A3 is a 200 room conference center hotel and 40,000 square feet. Of, uh, of conference area, and hopefully to accommodate these VIP visitors uh, that uh, Sue was talking about. And A4 is another smaller office building, uh, hopefully a single tenant building of roughly 84,000 feet. And then the B block are four buildings, B1, 2, 3, and 4, roughly 150,000 each on a parking garage pedestal. And again, they're set up in a campus fashion that they could be one large building, uh, two not so large buildings or four smaller buildings. So we're set to accommodate all of these kind of users that are gonna wanna be in and around this geospatial center and hopefully growing from all over the world. And then the C1 building will become, our goal is that will become a skiff. So we'll have an on-site skiff with parking behind it. There's over 1,200 parking spaces behind it. And that's really the innovation district. On the south half, and I'll show you more detail in a minute, is all anchored by the building right in the middle called EA1 building, which is Ponce Health Science University Med School. They opened up in 2018 in the Globe building on Tucker, and they are expanding there. They've applied to the LCME to expand their medical school from Ponce, Puerto Rico to St. Louis. We should be hearing, Dr. Lenahan should be hearing about that sometime late June, early July of this year, which will kick off this building. And uh, that building alone will house over 3,500 staff, professors, and students. And it's a full MD med school. And then off to the to the right is his student housing that we're facing on the parking garages. And you'll see some images here in a minute, all the way down to Homer G. Phillips Hospital. And you see letters M1, 2, and 3. If you drive down uh, Jefferson today, you'll see M1 under construction. And uh, it should, uh, that's, we have to do it this way because that's the way our state certificate of need laws require us. That building will be completed construction-wise in September. All the operational stuff required for the hospital will go on in October, early November, and hopefully open up uh, early winter of this year. Again, that's quite a few jobs. And hopefully in the market, uh, that's gonna drive a full service hospital for M2 and M3. Dr. Lenahan School is the largest uh, behavioral school in the country. And a major part of our hospital, not only hopefully will it be a full service hospital, it'll also have a major behavioral health orientation to it as well. 
the H1 building there was going to be an extended stay hotel, uh, but the hospital and med school people have asked that that be an empty chair for them. So this is uh, quite exciting. Uh, the street work uh, is about 50% done on uh, Thomas, and then the rest of it uh, will be completed again by September. So as you're driving up, please come, come visit. Uh, next slide, please. This is the Health Works Village side. Uh, this med school, we actually are building this for developing it for Dr. Lenahan down in Puerto Rico right now. Uh, we just are pouring the second floor slabs down there. And this is a direct replica of that. And the way he teaches, it has a thousand seat auditorium that's facing a four acre park, which is very significant. And that will be available to the public as well. So for public presentations and it can be divided into thirds. So next slide, please. If you'll notice all these buildings are connected by bridges so that medical students will be able to walk from the med school to their housing all the way to the hospital. And this is the student housing that faces on the parking garages on the south side of the, of the park. And that park, by the way, we held the competition uh, three years ago with high school students and uh, the winning on, on what should be in this park from a community point of view. And you're gonna be fascinated to see some of their ideas that we're gonna integrate uh, uh, from these various competitions from these young people from years ago. So integrating stories and integrating the community and what's going on here is very, very important to us. Next slide, please. And this is the hospital. Uh, phase two of it, hopefully. And if you'll click on the next one, you'll be able to see it. The M1 there is the hospital that's under construction now. And then you see the, the uh, main hospital, that's M2 and M3, which you'll have to follow. Obviously, we've got to get phase one done and accepted and all of our codes and operational before anything can be expanded. And when the marketplace has to demand it as well. Also in this slide, you're seeing the solar on the roofs. We have over 800 acres of so eight acres rather of solar on the Pruitt-Igoe Innovation District site. And we are developing what we call a microgrid. So it's made up of three components, obviously solar, large battery for storage, and then uh, gas driven micro turbines that'll be scattered throughout the site. So we will have 100% redundancy in our power and we'll actually operate that way during the day and then operate off the grid at night. Very, very significant to these kind of users because this is a 24 seven site, just like uh, the NGA is 24 seven. Next slide, please. This is now across the street. It's Caddy Corner. It's the Northwest corner of uh, Jefferson and Cass. We like to call it the community district where we're just beginning work. It's about a 29 acre site. And uh, the corner there, we've been working with the carpenters for almost a year on uh, bringing a new carpenters uh, training and learning center. You click on the next slide, it's really cool. It's uh, the, they're closing three existing sites and consolidating here and we'll train over 2000 students a year in all the various trades that the carpenters do here in St. Louis. It, this Carpenters Union covers all of the state of Missouri, all of Southern Illinois, and all of the state of Kansas. So it's a, it's a very, very large district. Their goal and our goal is that someone could walk down the street and look in the windows and actually see what a carpenter does. Because remember, one of our major missions is to find jobs for people in the community to get the economic engine running and learning how to to see and do things to have wealth creation within this community. So they'll be able to see it. They'll be able to come and walk across the street into the innovation district and see professionals in the geospatial industry or be able to see doctors and nurses as well. So our idea is to expose and have this place come alive. And we're absolutely excited about the carpenters. We got Various things we have to do to bring this to fruition, and uh, the, namely the design that needs to be developed more, which we're working with Lamar Johnson and Clayco on. Next slide. 
just to the west of uh, the Carpenters Building. Uh, we've engaged a team from Boise, Idaho to work with us for uh, 225 uh, market rate apartments. Uh, and this is uh, very significant. We believe that hopefully many of the NGA people, many of the square uh, folks that come to work on the north side will want somewhere to live that's interactive and, and very active with things going on. And we hope the community district, our plan for it is to be very mixed use and be alive and have things going on all the time. Next slide, please. The Star District stands for Science, Technology and Applied Research. Uh, this is up at, at St. Louis Avenue and Parnell and Jefferson. Uh, We've been in a competition for quite a few different users up here, but the idea is to support the NGA, our hospital, our med school, and the entire community with services. Uh, so storage, you heard Sue say there's going to be a year's worth of computer equipment and technology going into the building. Where are they going to stage this stuff? They're going to need office, warehouse space, that kind of thing. And it's going to be an ongoing nature. So, and it's put here to support Sentient, uh, who's been there for 115 years and 400 and some odd employees, almost 500 employees there. So, we are surrounding them. And then, if you look on the right hand side, that's uh, parking, employee parking for all over. Because parking is, as you heard John talk about, how significant it is on his end, and Sue's parking her people on site. We've got to make sure we accommodate parking and it's going to, everything will be at a typical downtown kind of rate. And a lot of employees will not be able to afford that. So our idea is to have employee parking. And also we're hoping that we'll attract school kids here. Uh, so we would have a place where those buses wouldn't get it mixed in with everything. We'd have a place for them to park. So that's the planning we're trying to do on that end of the site. That's it uh, from my perspective, but uh, also want to make sure that we say again that integrating with the community is something that's really important to us. Um, you know, we we just had a, a tour of the hospital with quite a few of the older people and people from the community that were really excited to see what was going on inside the hospital. That's what we do every day. And uh, we never dreamed we'd be as here today and uh, be talking about how significant the NGA is to St. Louis and how significant our St. Louis is. So things are regenerating. And I appreciate this opportunity to speak with all of you. Thank you. Paul, that was that was a great presentation. Thank you so much. You know, I think it's um, hopefully very interesting and, and informative for everybody that's um, attending today's webinar to better understand the impact of each of these respective projects um, that they're going to have not just on the city of St. Louis, but also on North St. Louis in particular. Um, and the um, the way that each of the projects are able to sync together and, and sort of play off of each other in, in some way, shape or form. Um, <clears throat> hopefully everyone is monitoring the um, question and answers um, that have been posted throughout each of the presentations. And actually our, our panelists have started to respond to some of those questions that have come in. Um, if, if each of the uh, uh, folks joining us today, if you wanna take some time to go through those, um, you might find it informative. Um, Paul, one of the, there is a question that's currently pending for you. Um, how does Homer G. Hospital relate to the Ponchi Health Services, or I'm sorry, Ponchi Health Sciences University? Um, is it the teaching arm of the med school? It, yes, it's Ponce, P-O-N-C-E, -E, Ponce Health Sciences University, which is an MD school. When you're training doctors and nurses, they must do clinicals and residencies. So uh, the idea of creating the opportunity for that to happen in the community and why that's so significant is Ponce Health Sciences University averages over 40% minority students, which is off the chart. Uh, and Dr. Lenahan has perfected this starting in Harlem and down in Puerto Rico. And now we're going to bring that here. So we have to have a place for those people to train. So yes, but our hospital will not be able to accommodate 100% of the medical students, but yes, it's going to be a teaching hospital. 
So we will always have uh, residents uh, from the med school in our hospital, yes. That's great, thank you. Um, you know, one, one question that I had, you know, I heard each of you throughout your presentations talk about jobs. Um, you know, Sue, with the NGA project, there's gonna be roughly around 3000 employees. Um, John, I know in the, um, you know, in the 900 North Tucker building square is gonna have roughly 1200 jobs, uh, square employees rather, um, you know, working in the building. Um, Paul, with your various developments, you know, I know there's hundreds of jobs being created there as well. Um, are, are each of you able to touch on or, or able to expand upon um, the talent pool here in St. Louis and um, any challenges that may come along with, you know, uh, identifying those, those uh, new employees and with the appropriate skill sets? Yeah, I, I mean, I can say for NGA, uh, are roughly 3,100 employees. Um, you know, certainly we have continual turnover, right? People retire. Uh, we, we do a pretty good job of retaining folks, but um, our workforce is getting older and we're seeing more and more people head out the door for, for that retirement. So it's a big deal for us um, to work with the local community on that workforce development piece, particularly in the STEM area. A lot of our jobs are highly technical, whether it's on the computer science side or uh, our trade craft, our mission area, uh, imagery analysis, geomatics, which is something that's very unfamiliar to a lot of people, but highly technical involving photogrammetry, uh, understanding earth sciences in, in a very deep way. Um, so it's important for us to connect with uh, school children today to ensure that they become interested in what NGA does and as a potential um, career field. So we're working very closely, uh, at, even at the grade school level to build that interest. Uh, but I mentioned the partnership with Harris Stowe in terms of developing teachers who can build that interest level. Uh, and in addition, the partnerships we have with schools like UMSL, with SIU Edwardsville, with the St. Louis University, Washington University, and going on um, to try to fill that pipeline with the, the capabilities that we need. And honestly, all of those activities, I think, benefit the St. Louis workforce as a whole in developing and, and improving our local economy by having um, those skills that a lot of us need. Ben, from, uh, from my perspective, it, uh, it, Sue is so right. Uh, I think that's the most difficult piece is to keep the pipeline filled, not for all of us, uh, not just the NGA, but all the people that are going to be supporting the NGA. And I think it begins with construction, uh, you know, with Albon and the carpenters coming down here, realizing this community is its future. And uh, we need to train more kids there and, and kids of color. Uh, the other one is working with the schools in the STEM programs, as Sue mentioned, we're, we're close. It, that's been the you. most difficult piece because the, uh, you know, I get asked in the community all the time, how are my kids or my grandkids going to get a job in the NGA or somewhere around there? So the idea is how do we bridge that gap? Well, we've come up with some concept that we'll be rolling out later to work with the schools to eventually help bring this community into this kind of workforce. The same is true with the hospitals. Dr. Lenahan, just like we want kids to see what a carpenter is, we want people in the community to see what a doctor and a nurse and a med tech can do and have, say, hey, that's in my neighborhood. I can see it and aspire for something different. We're hoping to really light that fire. Uh, and, and here in North St. Louis, that's where it's got to happen. It's got to happen here. Yeah, just echo, I mean, obviously these things do take years. The, the interesting thing is we have um, some great universities with WashU and SLU, and we are, we do have the graduates, we do have the talent, and for whatever reason, they're not sticking around. And it's a chicken and egg thing where they're not sticking around because the jobs aren't here, and the jobs aren't here because they can't get the talent, you know, that kind of thing. I've, I've heard that a bunch with companies that, that are reluctant to come here. And so, um, I, I think it does happen one, one company at a time. Okay, one 
you know, or it can happen in a big way with Square, but it can happen in a small way also. And I think that to the degree that what Paul, Susan, and I are all talking about is infrastructure and, and putting in bricks and mortar and those things that attract um, the talent. I mean, if you, I wish I could give a tour to everyone here of the, of the Square building. I mean, if, if that was the place I worked, I wouldn't work at home at all. You know, I mean, it's just, it's very dynamic and these, these renovations are terrific. And so I think to the degree that we've got a lot of work in front of us, but um, again, the education piece, the retraining, whether it's with the carpenters, whether it's on the construction side or whether it's getting the next IT jobs, um, it's, it's all really important. Um, there's a question that came up that I'm gonna answer live about the Missouri Historic Tax Credit Program. Um, and we, we, you know, I, I guess I want to also say something about incentives because we have a new mayor um, and has taken a specific stance on the TIFs. And I, I know in many ways, it seems that um, uh, the, the incentives are, are sometimes difficult to understand, but I, I can tell you that um, we could not have done the project without the basket of incentives that we received. And Paul, I know you're in the same boat that it, it's messy and it's bumpy and sometimes it doesn't always work, but they are absolutely essential uh, for the risks that developers take and moving forward and the infrastructure that is required that is missing right now, especially on the north side. And it's it's a very difficult thing about their, you know, I won't say that their the TIF works always or that it hasn't been abused potentially, but um, you know, in terms of the rents that we can charge, the dollars that are that are needed, even just on the things to before you even get the project going. And so I'm I did not mention the partners in this, but certainly the state of Missouri, the city of St. Louis, the federal side, it, it's it's been very important for the success of our project. And I think if the incentives are make sense anywhere, it is absolutely on the north side. Agree, but for the state support and legislation, we wouldn't have been able to satisfy the NGA's requirements. So when the state of Missouri stepped up to uh, make sure that the site could be delivered uh, as well as the city has and all of us have. So uh, the, the commodity today are jobs and uh, we have to be able to compete in uh, government and in, in business together and the public private partnership. And, and that's what we've been attempting to do. It couldn't happen, but for that, for sure, as John says. One of the questions that's come up was the percentage of jobs that come from out of town. You know, the unfortunate thing is um, Paul and I are going to have an easier time attracting people from out of town than getting somebody from to move their, their business from like Chesterfield or St. Charles. Um, and that, that's really unfortunate because uh, I think a lot of people have given up on downtown and given up on the city. And there, there's, you know, we have our challenges, uh, but if you go to any urban area, they all have, they don't have enough parking. They have homeless people. They, you know, and, and St. Louis is no different, but we've, it, it's, um, we're, regrettably, we are going to have an easier time moving, moving jobs in from out of town. And that, that's just how it is in changing the ecosystem. And so um, it's happening. It's happening. Um, as, as Paul said, there, it is regenerating. And um, it can be something, I mean, um, Steve Stone told me in the Globe building, he got a company, I can't think the name of it. It's a, a ball aerospace, I think, is interested in this building, you know? And I mean, it's just, that's, that's not even a headline, but that, that, that's how it goes. And uh, you get the big ones and the small ones and um, kind of like the way, you know, uh, Cortex was, 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 was really a real estate play for 10 or 15 years. And then Wexford came in and it became an innovation district and it was a 15 year overnight success. And I, I think that we will, you know, Paul, you've been at it 20 years. I'm the new guy at three and, 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 and certainly Sue with the NGA, it's all, it's all coming together here. So it's exciting. I saw the question about the police uh, in crime. Uh, I think the best answer to that that uh, at least somebody like me can give is the best to turn to crime that I know is a job. And uh, our whole goal has been job creation. If we create jobs for people in the community, it will affect crime. Uh, it's just 
as John and Sue have said, it's a long pull. You just got to stay with it and keep plugging. And we are adding jobs every day, and that's going to help turn things around. Um, one one question that I had for Sue, um, you know, I can I can picture the um, front page of the Post Dispatch when um, Mayor Slay, you know, had the phone in one hand and the thumbs up in the other hand. Um, announcing that, that NGA had, had decided to keep the headquarters in St. Louis. Um, are you able to share a little bit more that sort of some of the dynamic of what went into the decision-making progress process? And, you know, I know St. Louis was competing against a number of other cities. So what were some of the considerations that went into uh, making that decision? Um, so I can say truly a lot, <laughs> a lot. I have a couple of binders full of our internal reports and, um, investigation and analysis of alternatives that we did. Uh, besides what I mentioned in terms of, um, I, I still refer to it as the energy going on in St. Louis at the time with the T-Rex and the Cortex and what the universities were doing and some existing partnerships we already had. Um, you know, we certainly looked at proximity to our current workplace. Um, and, and when we got down to the four sites, they were all within 25 miles. So that was considered you know, to be local enough that it wasn't going to cause big problems. But we did look at um, commutes and um, you know, just the reality of, of how far people were, were willing to go. Um, we looked at environmental factors. So that's a big piece from the standpoint of the EPA, we were, we were required to do an environmental impact study. Um, that involves a lot of things, kind of what you would think of in terms of environmental impact. You know, were we going to go in and upset a wetland or uh, national historic sites, particularly Native American sites? We were, we were thrilled that, that there were no Native American historic sites in uh, the N2W footprint. That was huge. Um, so that kind of thing, but certainly also um, the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers helped us look, look at whether we were going to have any negative impacts when we moved in, whether that be to the environment or even to the local community. So on balance, on balance, would we be positive or negative? And in the case of the site in St. Louis Place, um, I think other than the site we were looking at out in Fenton, um, you know, it did get very high marks from the standpoint that we would be a positive to the area rather than a negative. So that was another big piece of it. Um, workforce um, in terms of, of workforce availability, as well as, um, you know, what, what we could do in terms of retaining and attracting our current or our, our future workforce from a recruitment standpoint. So Director Cardillo at the time, um, when he looked at everything, you know, it he did have a belief that an urban location would be more attractive to our future workforce than, than going out into suburbia or into a more rural area. So, you know, again, there were a whole lot of things. Cost was a piece of it too. Um, not just what would the site cost us, but what impact would the site have on the cost of building? Um, so, you know, just another piece of the piece of the pie there. But by and large, when it when it really came down to it, the the factors that tilted the selection in favor of the site in North St. Louis uh, were the the relationship we had with current industry partners in the St. Louis region, um, the ability to attract those future industry partners to come in, the relationship we have with the local universities, the T-Rex, the, the Cortex, the things going on in terms of collaboration, incubation, et cetera. And then finally that recruitment of the future workforce. Those were, those were the, the tilting factors. And if I could add to that, the. Uh, uh, and the incredible decision and the journey it took to get there in this time of so much political divide to see how Senator Blunt and Congressman Clay and our state government and our city worked together 
to be able to accommodate all of NGA's need is spectacular and not written about enough and not enough credit is given to those folks to be people that were so different in their political views and everything else decided that keeping the NGA here, the jobs and what it could mean to our urban core, uh, we all owe them a great debt of gratitude. There's no question. <clears throat> it's certainly a, <clears throat> excuse me, certainly a big win for St. Louis. Um, you know, what, one other um, follow-up question that I have for each of you is that, um, you know, a lot of the folks that are attending today's presentation are active in the commercial real estate industry, um, either um, as commercial real estate brokers or um, other subsets of our industry. Um, what are some ways that folks that are active in commercial real estate um, might help to, um, you know, either facilitate or to complement some of the projects that you have currently going on, you know, Certainly, we're all very excited about these various projects, but is there anything, is there some sort of call to action that you might be able to um, suggest that, um, you know, folks can do to, to you know, help support um, what you're doing? I think the initial thing would be is come downtown, you know, or just be willing to take clients to the, through the buildings. I don't think it gets any more complicated than that. I know in talking to, um, Steve Stone and getting stereo taxes, they were, they were a flight risk and um, they're in, over in Cortex. And Cortex was actually, that was the first company that was really Cortex's reason for being. They've been there for 20 some odd years and they, Steve had a hard time even getting them to consider coming down. So I think it, it's really nothing more complicated than, you know, give us a chance. I mean, I, I was talking to Bill DeWitt about you know, they're 100% leased now in their apartments and they're close on their commercial. And just, he, he just said getting people to come down and even consider that. So I, I, I don't know that it's any more complicated than that. I would come at it differently. Uh, what I would say to the folks on the line, because you all are a, a group that's based on education, is get educated. Uh, a, about North St. Louis and what it is. The, I can't tell you, like John says, or Sue tell you, how many people have never been north of Washington Avenue, uh, but to come down and actually see what's going on. So to educate yourself on our city. The second thing is, is I, I don't know about John, but to just understand what the NGA is, what they do, and where that industry going. I, I don't have enough time every day to read and try to learn about it because that is our customer in, uh, in attempting to get here. And then my last comment would be Bob Clark, my partner in all of this and Clayco and Lamar Johnson, we're pretty dangerous when there are jobs on the table and uh, to win them for our community, we're gonna get our fair share. So you bring them on and we'll, we'll get the job done and make the numbers work. That's the least of my worry is making the numbers work. It's uh, the hardest thing is to make sure people understand what's really going on here. And that's why I really appreciate this forum for the three of us to be able to share what's really happened. I wanna jump in on, uh, thanks Paul, I, echoing that. Um, I wanna jump in on a question, Dick, that you asked in the chat or the Q and A on the uh, Urban Land Institute and the um, kind of integrating in the, the different mix and, and of different uses. Um, and and I, that is very critical. You can't just, we've got some examples of parking garages that are dropped in without retail or even sometimes with. And so integrating that in is the trick. And again, if you, and I know Ballpark Village, not everyone is a fan, but if you walk in around there, it's, it's terrific, you know, as far as just the mix and it's, um, finding that and doing it maybe in an, in an authentic and urban way. And so that the parking works and, and the retail is, is a bit of a trick. And that again, gets back into the incentives. Uh, the, the return on a parking garage is not great. Okay. And you have to build that into the whole picture. So whether you're using the MDFB or that, that's where we look for those partners, but in order to get it to work, um, there, there is a little bit of magic that goes in there and a little bit of lock in over time. And, um, but that, that's absolutely critical to not just, um, but, but to really integrate all those different pieces together. 
Great question. Thank you. Um, well, it looks like we are just about out of time. So I um, appreciate each of your responses. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to Tiffany um, to wrap us up. Well, thank you so much to our presenters. This was so informative and very interesting. And uh, Susan Pullman with NGA, John Berglin with the Starwood Group and Downtown Innovation District, Paul McKee with M Property Services and Northside Gen Regeneration. Thank you to Dawn, uh, our chapter administrator for her support and guidance. And as always, as we mentioned earlier, we recorded today's program and um, it'll be available on our YouTube page. So please be sure to take a survey. Um, let us know what you thought of today's program and don't forget to follow us on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, and visit our website. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you.